Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Nate with The King of Random, and today we're going to be doing a few small projects that let us take a look at the relationship between magnets and electricity. Growing up, I always loved playing with magnets, and over the years, the quality of magnets available has improved significantly. These silver-colored rare earth magnets are very powerful, and you can do a lot of really cool things with them. The purpose of today's video is to show you a few awesome tricks that you can do with magnets and electricity using some easily available supplies. Here are the materials we're going to need for today's projects. Aluminum foil, some AA and AAA batteries, some strong rare earth magnets, and you want to make sure that the diameter of the magnet is at least a little bit larger than the diameter of your AAA battery. Some coated copper wire. I found this in the jewelry making section at a craft store. This is copper wire that has a thin layer of enamel paint over it. It can often come in several different colors. Some uncoated copper wire, electrical tape, and a couple safety pins. Now the first thing that we're going to do is extremely simple. I have here a stack of these rare earth magnets and a roll of foil. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drop the magnets down through the tube to watch what happens. There's nothing in this tube, it's completely empty. Let's watch what happens if I just drop them without the tube. They fall straight down, nothing's impeding them. But if I drop it through the foil, it goes way slower. Like that's not even half the speed. It's amazing how much slower it goes. It's not rubbing up against the size of the tube or anything like that. As far as I understand it, here's what happens. When a magnet moves past metal, it creates an electric field. And when electricity is running through metal, it creates a magnetic field. So as the magnet drops through the metal, the metal becomes charged with electricity and then turns into an electromagnet itself. The electromagnet that is the foil is then repelling the magnet that's falling down through the tube. So it slows it down a lot. And the more powerful the magnet, the more powerful the electric field, the more powerful the electromagnet, and the slower it goes. It's kind of confusing. Ooh, I'm gonna try and turn it upside down while, when it's almost at the bottom and just keep it going. Oh, too soon. Oh, nope, nope. That's crazy. Magnets! Let's try the next experiment. For this one, we're going to take a AA battery and attach three of our rare earth magnets to the bottom of it. Next, we want to take about one foot of our bare copper wire. Bend your wire in half and use a pair of pliers to pinch where it's bent. Now let's bend the wire into a sort of a heart shape. You'll want to touch the bent portion of your wire to the top of your battery. Next, we want to bend the two ends of our wire so that they will run directly across the middle of the magnets. If you have excess wire sticking out too far, trim that off. You'll also want to bend your wires to make sure that the two ends are parallel to each other. At this point, we should be able to make a small motor by placing the wire on top of the battery so that the two ends of the wire are in contact with the magnets, the wire should begin to spin. Now you can see that the wire did begin to move, but it quickly destabilized and fell off. So we're going to add a couple of curves on the bottom wires to hold it more securely onto the magnet. By bending the wire around the battery, we can create a sort of groove that will line up with the magnets and hold our wire in place. I'm gonna see if it worked any better with the magnets on the other side so that the little nib of copper doesn't have to balance quite so perfectly on the tip of the battery. Well, now it just slipped off the other part of the battery. It still made contact right there on the little edge, so it still, oh, it finally slowed down. All right, I keep having my little copper motor spin so fast that it falls off and I'm trying to find ways to make it stay in place. So I think what I'm gonna try and do is I'm going to try and put a tiny divot in the back of the battery. That will give our little pivot point something to stay balanced in so it doesn't fly off quite so easily. I have a nail with a slightly dull head and I'm going to try and line that up with the very center of the back of the battery and lightly tap it with a hammer to give it a nice dent. I need to be careful, of course, that I don't stab into the battery. I don't know exactly what that would do, but I'm sure it wouldn't be good. All right, that's not bad. Let's try that out and see if this is gonna work. Yeah, that's working pretty well. Oh my gosh, and it's spinning so fast 
that its inertia is causing the battery and magnets to rotate the other direction a little bit. That's pretty funny. There you have it. It seems that making a dent in the battery does a pretty good job of helping it stay centered, and it doesn't fall off as easily. Now let's make another kind of motor. This one uses the same principles, but is a different design. We'll need our AA battery, a couple more magnets, two small safety pins, our coated wire, and some electrical tape. The coated wire is copper wire that has a thin layer of protective enamel on the outside of it. The enamel prevents the copper from making contact with the battery, so electricity can't flow through it unless we remove part of the enamel. To start, cut off about one foot of your coated copper wire. Leaving about two inches at the end, wrap your wire around your AA battery several times. Wrap the ends of the wire around the coil a few times to hold it all together. Now we want to trim the excess wires so that they extend about one centimeter beyond the edge of our AA battery. Now that our wire is trimmed, we need to remove the enamel from one side of the wires. Take some fine grit sandpaper and remove the enamel from one side of the wire until you can see the copper beneath it. You can see the copper color that shows that the enamel has been removed from one side of the other, but it's still in place on the other side. With the enamel removed from both sides of the wire, our coil is ready and it's time to assemble the rest of our motor. With electrical tape, attach the safety pins so they are in contact with the two ends of the battery. You'll want to be sure that the loops in the safety pins are at the same height and lined up with each other. Secure your battery and pins to the table with the pins pointing straight up. Attach one magnet to the battery in between the two pins. Feed one wire from your copper coil through the loop in one of the pins. Feed the other wire through the loop in the other pin. Let go of your coil and it might start moving. If it doesn't take off on its own right away, give it a little nudge. For the last experiment, we're going to need a little bit more copper wire. I have about 20 feet of it right here, and we're also going to need a AAA battery and four of our rare earth magnets. It can sometimes be tricky to find copper wire without any sort of coating on it. The copper wire I'm using comes with a plastic coating around it. I just shave that off and it gives me some nice exposed copper. I'm going to show you how I use a razor blade to quickly remove the plastic coating from this copper wire. Now that I've removed a thin strip of the plastic from the whole wire, I can easily peel it off from the rest. Next we want a wooden dowel with a diameter slightly larger than our magnets. What we want to do is tightly coil all 20 feet of this copper wire around the dowel. Now this seems like it's going to take a really long time, so I'm going to try and speed it up using power tools. With the dowel now securely attached to the chuck of the drill, I can now start spinning it and wrapping the wire around it evenly. Remove your copper coil from the dowel and spread it out just a little bit so there's a tiny bit of space in between each loop. If there are any spots where the gap is too large, you can usually just push it back together. We now have a copper coil about one foot long, so let's take our magnets and attach them to our battery. Before you attach two more magnets to the other end, you need to make sure that they're oriented correctly. Facing one direction, the magnets are attracted to each other and will pull themselves together. But if you flip them around, the magnets will repel each other. In that same orientation with the magnets repelling each other, attach two more magnets to the bottom of the battery. At this point, if you fit the battery and magnets into the copper coil, something pretty fun should happen. Check that out. The battery and magnets pull themselves through the copper coil like a little self-driving electric train. Let's do that again. Whoop. There it goes. Flies right through the whole coil. Whee! Made it around a curve. Okay, so what is happening as our little train goes through its little tunnel? When the magnets make contact with the copper coil, electricity is running through them and through the copper. As we know, electricity running through the metal wire turns it into a magnet. Because we have our magnets facing opposite directions, the magnet of the coil is pulling on one side and pushing on the other, running it through like a train. It just runs. It goes all on its own. That's so fun. I could probably just play with this thing all day. Whee! So cool. So many neat things you can do with magnets and electricity. A quick recap. 
a powerful magnet dropped through a tube of aluminum foil will fall very slowly because its movement creates an electromagnet which slows it down. This small type of motor was made by just bending a piece of copper so it touched the top of the battery and the magnet stuck to the bottom of it. It had some problems destabilizing until we flipped the battery upside down and put a small divot in the bottom of it. Another type of small motor can be made by running electricity through a tightly wound copper coil rotating over a magnet. A couple of magnets stuck to a battery in opposite directions will run through a copper coil like a miniature electric train. There you have it. Now you know a few small, simple tricks you can do with magnets and electricity at home. Thank you for joining us for this project, and we will see you in the next one. Talk to you then. Cool things with them. Well, next we want to get a... Hey guys, quick reminder that King of Random t-shirts are available once again. Just go ahead and click the link at the top of the description and it'll take you to where you can get one today.